Not really sure. My name is Mark Graham. Uh, I manage the Wayback Machine at the Internet Archive. And I am super psyched uh, to be here today with you all to share a little bit about what we're doing at the Internet Archive with a focus on some of our work with the Wikimedia Foundation and the Wikipedia communities. Uh, this work is uh, a, a team effort, and I am um, happy that at least three of the team members are here, Jake Orlitz, uh, Maximilian Dorr, and James Hare, uh, comprise three of the uh, members of Team uh, Turn All References Blue. And I'll explain what that means in a second here and why is that not working? Okay, let me do a click into there and we'll go ahead. So, okay, first of all, this is the home of the Internet Archive at 300 Funston in San Francisco. I'm gonna talk a little bit about more about that later here. And this is uh, one of our new homes up in, San Fran up in uh, Vancouver. Uh, if any of you are uh, ever uh, around, uh, please do stop by. This is our new headquarters for Internet Archive Canada. Uh, we are uh, expanding our operations around the world, uh, both physically and virtually. What do we do at the Internet Archive? We're a 28-year-old nonprofit dedicated to the mission of universal access to all knowledge. Uh, we collect uh, born digital material, preserve it, organize and make it available as well as analog material that we digitize, organize, and make available, including uh, more than a million software titles. For example, Prince of Persia. And we don't just archive this material, but through emulation software, you can actually use it online in your favorite browser. Uh, millions of moving images, uh, 15 million audio recordings, a lot of television, uh, television news. I'm going to focus on that a little bit. Uh, many, many eBooks. You've probably heard a little bit about some of our uh, run-ins with some of the publishers. I will address that. Uh, and a lot of web pages, more than 916 a billion web pages representing trillions of, of URLs. Altogether, about 150 petabyte of material. And yes, the material is in more than one place. Mm -hmm. So if our, our buildings in the Bay Area go down, we'll be okay. Uh, this is what the Wayback Machine uh, looks like. Uh, how many here have never used the Wayback Machine? Right, that's what I thought. Okay, so um, we won't spend too much time on it except to say that we archive more than 1 billion URLs a day and we uh, select them through a whole variety of mechanisms uh, and through partnerships that we have with many entities, uh, especially with the, uh, the 320 some plus Wikipedia sites that we monitor continuously. We archive every URL published in every Wikipedia article and outlinks from those URLs. What do we focus on? We focus on everything. So we focus on not focusing. No, we do have to focus on some things. News, about 170,000 uh, news sites around the world. Social media, especially links. So all of the links and all of the X posts, uh, Reddit uh, and many other platforms, a lot of TikTok, a lot of YouTube, et cetera, governments around the world, uh, NGOs, academia. We partner with WordPress, uh, so we get uh, firehose feeds from, from WordPress. We also partner with Cloudflare. Uh, I think WordPress runs more than 40% of the web. Cloudflare represents more than 40% of the web. Uh, we have more than uh, 1,200 partners of, for our archive it program. This is where we charge money to museums, governments, and libraries to help do help them do archiving, and of course, uh, Wikipedia. We just launched our most uh, recent end of term archive in collaboration with the Library of Congress, the National Archives. This is where we focus on the material published by US government uh, sites. There's more than 40,000 websites uh, that we've identified. And to give you some idea of the scale, in the last eight days, we have uh, archived more than 300,000 YouTube videos that were published by uh, the US government. Uh, this is what our save page now interface looks like. You may be familiar with it from the bottom right of the Wayback Machine. I just wanna also know there's an interface for it where you can submit many URLs via a Google Sheet, like tens of thousands of URLs with, with one click. There is an API that you can integrate with your applications. You can submit to uh, uh, an email. Uh, there's an iOS and Android app. There are browser extensions. Uh, and if you're logged in to archive.org, you get a lot more features in Save Page Now than if you're not logged in. And of course, it's, it's all free. To give you just some idea of the scale of what we work in, 
This is an example of where one seed page, one URL uh, on CNN.com on one day uh, then can translate into more than 31,000 URLs. If all you do is archive that one page, the embedded uh, URLs on that page, the JavaScript, the CSS, et cetera, and all of the outlinked pages from that one page and all of their embedded resources. So the numbers get pretty quick, pretty quickly. And this is just an example of some of the, um, the organizations that we have uh, partnered with and have integrations with their, their platforms. So today I'm gonna uh, address a little bit about what we do with regard to linked data. I, I appreciated um, the last presentation and uh, Andrew showing uh, linked data in action. So we think about linked data, about the relationship between uh, books, the web, and academic papers. Other things too, but let's just focus on those, those three things alone. Uh, and one of the ways that we work to enhance uh, linked data is the reliability and the quality of the links. There are more than 130 million uh, URLs uh, individual unique URLs across 320 Wikipedia language editions. We know because we built a database of them. Uh, and we monitor them continuously. We identify about 10,000 a day that go bad. Uh, then we work to fix them. And so today or yesterday, uh, I can share that we have identified and fixed more than 22,297,916 otherwise broken links on Wikipedia articles and replace them, edited them with links from the Wayback Machine. That usually gets an applause, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Right? I I think it's a cool thing. I don't know. It's uh, you know, we uh, we started doing this about nine years ago, and we're getting better at it. We're also getting better at understanding why this happens. Uh, there are any one of a number of reasons why good links go bad, uh, and we you know one that we're exploring now is. Uh, same, same content, different URL, which uh, it, it turns out is a, like a really big thing where people uh, don't put in the proper redirects. The material is still there, um, but we have to discover it and then, and then link to it. Another would be um, a soft furrow force, uh, and uh, where it's more like a, a content drift kind of thing. Uh, or they're, you're getting a 200 response code from the server, not a 404 but the material isn't there anymore. So we're continuing to get better at, at doing what we're doing. And Maximilian Dorr sitting right up here on the front is the main engineer behind that project. This is a daily bash, dashboard that I look at, one of many that I, I check out every morning when I wake up, showing us progress that we're making um, on this effort. In addition to fixing broken links, uh, the second pillar of our effort of Turn All References Blue is adding um, links that, would, that don't otherwise exist. So we scour through Wikipedia articles looking for references to books and academic papers that we can then add a link to, to digital versions of those resources available from primarily the Internet Archive. Uh, and to date, we have added, we and the Wikipedia community uh, members have added more than 2,694,620 links uh, back to uh, books and academic papers available from archive.org. And this is a, a daily effort. Now, here's an example where uh, we've added links to the uh, article about Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, I, I personally went through and did this one. There were about 120 books referenced in this article, and we've linked about 90 of them um, to digital versions of the books. And, and often, and what I really would like to emphasize is um, to the degree possible, if when we are uh, linking to a book, we can try to link to the specific paragraph or page within a book, not just the whole book. I think that would enhance the, uh, the usefulness of these kind of connections. Here's an example of a new project at the Internet Archive where we're using artificial intelligence to go through digital versions of books that we have and then produce high quality clickable table of contents. Uh, within our open library uh, interface. Open library is basically a, a card catalog for books available from archive.org. It was created by the late Aaron Schwartz uh, when he worked with the Internet Archive. The idea was one web page for every uh, book ever published. So here is the uh, viruses of lower vertebrae and a list of, um, of uh, the table of contents. 
How do we do this work? Well, one of the ways is we, uh, a few years ago, uh, the Internet Archive uh, basically bought a bookstore called Better World Books up in Mishawaka, Indiana. And, um, and then we donated it to a, a mission-aligned uh, nonprofit with the Internet Archive. So Better World Books is owned by a 501c3, and uh, they have about 30 million books in their inventory. And what we do is we make a, a wish list of books that are, are referenced in Wikipedia articles or in college university tests, texts. We pull um, about a million of those books off the uh, conveyor belts. At... That's not fair. Uh, I'm going to keep going. It's 10 minutes up. I've got 20 minutes. Thank you. Uh, we pull the books off the conveyor belts. We digitize them. Um, and then we, uh, we draw links to uh, them. Uh, here's, uh, what it looks like, uh, there's forklifts and 18 wheelers and all the rest of that involved in the process. When the books are sent, um, uh, the books are then packaged, put in shipping containers, sent to the Philippines, where we have more than 100 people uh, that work in ships, and they digitize the books. We digitize about 4,600 books every single day. If you come to our office in San Francisco, there's a machine like this there. We have a small boutique uh, digitization center. If you give us a book, we'll digitize it for you. Uh, here's a, a quick look at the front page of our academic program, a scholar.archive.org, where we have uh, archived more than 35 million open uh, academic papers. So this is not Sci-Hub. This is not a shadow library. These are uh, academic papers that have been available online, on the web, publicly accessible. Okay, I'm going to shift a little bit. What else are we doing at the Internet Archive? Well, we think that, the, uh, that making it such that if someone sees something on, on the web or experiences it, on say on television, and there's context about that that would help them better understand that resource, that context should be readily available. So here's an example where, we, where we've added context in the form of a yellow banner to something on the web. In this case, an article uh, in, in the New York Post. And, the, and if you click on the link that says context related to this web page from the Washington Post, it's actually New York Post, can be found here, you basically are taking, uh, to, oh, sorry, to an article in the Washington Post explaining the context of that article. And the context, in fact, wasn't that uh, Biden was wandering off the larger context as he was walking off to go talk with someone. Here's another example. Um, this is someone who tweeted, actually, the someone was the World Health Organization. Remember back when the World Health Organization famously tweeted, fact, colon, COVID is not airborne. Well, here's a Nature article that explains, in fact, that, uh, that COVID was airborne and why it took the WHO about two, about two years to figure out, uh, in fact, that COVID was airborne and say it. It's often said that, um, that truth is the first casualty of war. When the war started, we, uh, folk, we, we doubled down on archiving television, in particular television from around the world. I wanted, I personally wanted to know what Russians were uh, experiencing on their television. So we began archiving uh, four Russian TV channels, a uh, Ukrainian and a Belarusian channel. We've expanded that now to 35 uh, channels, news channels. This is not, this is not entertainment, this is news. China, uh, uh, North Korea, Hong Kong, uh, Afghanistan, uh, et cetera. So this is what, what our American news looks like. Uh, it is closed captioned, so you can see the text right there. Uh, you can search the text, it's pretty nice, pretty easy to navigate. But this is what the Russian TV looks like. There's no closed caption. They don't require a closed caption in Russia. So what do we do? The first thing we did was we built this visual explorer where one can go in and you can scan through large quantities of video easily, uh, quickly. And you might see the, the Russian language uh, on the right uh, that's because uh, what we, we're transcribing the, the material using AI. And then we're translating the material also using AI into English. Uh, and then, uh, and then we, we pump it back into our system where you can now do a full text search in English on Russian television. And I'm going to try to do a quick little demo here. Uh, I'm going to, if this works, what we'll see is Russian television. And you can't hear that very well, but you're seeing the, the real-time English translation of that put forward as closed caption right there on top of the Russian television. And hopefully, if I close this window, I can get back to where I was. Where I was. This is the scary part. And um, 
and and that didn't work. I'm going to try going like this. I'm going to go try like that, and I'm going to go like there. There is that was it. All right, I'm almost done. A uh, new project uh, of the Terminal References Blue program is called the Internet Archive Reference Explorer. You basically put in uh, a, any URL of a Wikipedia article, and it analyzes every link on that page um, for a whole variety of health checks. Uh, this is a work in progress. If anyone would like to work with us on this project or any other project, please come talk with me. We, uh, we are planning to have an event. Uh, this is not 100% finalized, but we're pretty sure it's going to happen at the Internet Archive on February 14th and 15th. And it's a WikiCred uh, Con, WikiCred Con event. And um, Jake Orlitz, who's here, and Jenny A. Lee uh, are helping to put this together. And James Hare, please come talk to us. Please, if you're in the Bay Area, come to our annual event, October 23rd. Our Rosie's going to be on stage back there. Uh, hey, Rosie. And um, the theme this year is, uh, is uh, preservation. So we're going to be highlighting the work that we do relative to, um, to preserving material. Also, we will be online. We typically have about 2,000 people in the online audience. We can fit about 600 um, in our church in San Francisco. Well, it used to be a regular kind of church. Now it's a temple for knowledge and information. Okay, I'm sure that some of you have heard about some of the lawsuits. Yeah, we got sued twice. Uh, we got sued by Hachette et al. These are publishers. Uh, we lost the first round of the lower court, uh, and we lost our appeal. We're now considering whether or not we're going to appeal to the Supreme Court. The, the lawsuit, in a nutshell, boils down to this. Whether or not a library in the digital age uh, under uh, U.S. copyright, uh, using fair use, has the right to take a physical copy of a book that it owns, make a digital version of it, and lend out one copy at a time of that digital version with DRM. That's referred to as controlled digital lending. That is the practice. That is what Hachette et al. objected to. We, we, we can uh, assert that that is uh, our right under a fair use uh, uh, understanding of US copyright, we will continue to, uh, to fight that in a variety of ways, including working to change the law. Um, the second lawsuit, which came down literally the day the judgment came down in the first lawsuit, was Universal Music Group and Sony uh, sued us for $621 million because we have uh, our digitized 78s. So these are recordings that are 70 years old or longer of music. Uh, the music was given to us by the Boston Public Library. They donated about 450,000 78 to us, and we spent many millions of our own dollars uh, to digitize this material and make it available. We've been, we've been uh, communicating about this project for 10 years at academic conferences uh, related to uh, music, et cetera. Uh, been very public about what we did. Uh, the, uh, the music industry did not warn us. They did not say, hey, please take these down. Had they done that, we would have. Uh, that's what we do, by the way. I have a team of 10 people uh, in our patron services department who do nothing but respond to uh, requests from people and, um, and help them. But they didn't do that. They decided to bring down a sledgehammer on us. Uh, I, I, by the way, I referenced that because there was an article. If you want to read more about that, Rolling Stone wrote a 20-page article about the suit last week. And here's an article that was in Wired also last week. Um, I, I bet it was a sensationalistic headline. The web's collective memory is stored in the servers of the Internet Archive. Legal battle threatened to wipe it all out. We're solid. We're not going anywhere. Uh, I did like this positive article that came out recently. Google decided to deprecate Google Cash. Um, so I reached out to them the day they announced they were deprecating it. Uh, within a few hours, we had an agreement that we would take it over. And this is my favorite headline, Google replaced cache leak with Internet Archive's Wayback Machine. Uh, shortly after that happened, Microsoft gave me a call, and we expect to be going live with Bing uh, in a couple of weeks. So, not all bad. Um, please come and visit us uh, in San Francisco. Uh, if you want to learn more about what we do, subscribe to our newsletters, read our blog, follow us on X, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, send us an email. I am mark at archive.org. Visit us at help.archive.org. 
and read about us in the press. And if you've got any questions, theoretically, we have negative nine minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. Sure. Well, you can do that. And I really, we do appreciate your support. How do we make our money? How do we get money? How do we pay for our bills? Um, basically three ways. One, program-related business activities, the 1,200 museums, libraries, and governments that, including the Library of Congress, that pay us money. Uh, the second way is uh, high wealth individuals and foundations. And the third way is um, we enjoy the support of about 160,000 individual donors, um, 17,000 of whom donate uh, to us every month, 10, 20, 15 dollars, whatever have you. Uh, I should say that we, we, we collaborated with people from the Wikimedia Foundation for like 10 plus years on how it's done. So if you look at our banners, or you look at your banners, if they look kind of similar, yeah. there might be a reason for it. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm curious about uh, the high school banners. How yeah, you that's a great question. Um, so the way the question was with regard to the context that we are helping to uh, add, uh, and I want to say too, we're doing this in an open fashion. So there's an API uh, for the back end of this, of the key value pairs, the claims and the reviews, as is referred to. Um, and uh, so one one uh, instance of this would be the Wayback Machine itself. Another would be our browser extension. But I'm in conversation with some of the browsers about building uh, interventions into a browser such that if you're just like in the Brave browser today, if you go to a web page in the Brave browser that is no longer available on the web, that is returned to 404 or about 15 other error conditions, you'll be alerted to an archive of that in the Wayback Machine. So in the same way, if you go to a tweet that then there's context available, you'd be alerted uh, that there's context available. Where does this context come from? And the answer is other organizations. So specifically, we partnered with members of the International Fact-Checking Network, the IFCN, and also Retraction Watch. So Retraction Watch focuses on retractions of academic material, and IFCN members, PolitiFact, FactCheck.org, Washington Post FactCheck, Washington State French Press, the German Press Agency, et cetera, et cetera. They're the ones who are writing uh, those fact checks. And what we do is we say, Context about X from Y is available here. So we're not saying the Internet Archive is saying this. We're saying a third-party entity is saying this about that. Yes, we're going to wrap it up here. I got that signal. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Mark at archive.org. Thank you.